Hello, my name is Tom Lane, and I'm here to talk to you about a new SageMaker feature that will help you get started with machine learning in minutes. We're going to start off by taking a look at some of the challenges of typical machine learning workflows, and then jump into some of the details around Amazon SageMaker Jumpstart. We're going to look at the open source models, solutions, and getting started content before wrapping up with some customer comments. This is what a typical machine learning workflow might look like. First of all, we have to define a model, whether that's XGBoost or a neural network. We then provide labeled data to train the model. When we have a trained model, we move this to deployment, and then we can make predictions on unlabeled data. But in practice, this is not so simple. There's many mistakes and hurdles that we have to overcome. So first of all, if we're trying to define a model from an academic research paper, that could be ambiguous, lots of potential mistakes. Labeled data could have missing data, and there may be encoding errors. The model training could take too long, we might be using the wrong hyperparameters. Then when we move across to deployment, we need to set up all the Python packages correctly with the right versions, which can be complicated. The unlabeled data that we're passing to our endpoint needs to be processed in exactly the same way as the labeled data. And this can lead to disaster for model inference if we mess anything up along this process. Amazon SageMaker provides a number of different services to help along the way. Everything from ground truth, from labeling your data, to SageMaker endpoints for deploying HTTPS endpoints to interact with the model. But for beginners, it can be quite overwhelming to work out how these components interact and work together end to end. So with that, we introduced Amazon SageMaker Jumpstart. And all the three different components here can be used to help you get to market with machine learning applications much, much quicker than before. With a single click, you can deploy open source models, solutions, and getting started content. And we'll take a closer look at each of these categories. Starting with the open source models. Open source models can be incredibly powerful because they've already been trained on large data sets. And over time, their performance has just got better and better. We include over 150 pre-trained models in Jumpstart that cover the vision and text domains. Models like ResNet and MobileNet can be used for image classification, SSD and EfficientNet can be used for object detection. Moving across to the text domain, we have a collection of transformer models that includes the likes of BERT, Roberta, and Distilbert. And they can be used for a variety of natural language processing tasks, such as sentence classification, text classification, and question answering. As I mentioned before, these can be deployed with a single click. We can take a pre-trained model that's been trained on a large public data set such as image, ImageNet with a million images and a thousand classes and deployed to a SageMaker endpoint. But if you have your own data set, you can fine tune these pre-trained models to your particular use case. With a single click, you can fine tune and another single click, you can deploy that model. So let's take a closer look at one example here. Let's look at image classification. We'll deploy an endpoint and then run fine tuning with our own data. So we're starting here from the AWS Management Console. And we can either search or click on Amazon SageMaker. We need to navigate to SageMaker Studio. And this is how you access all the different components of Jumpstart. Now I'm not gonna run through the setup of Studio in this presentation. There are lots of other resources to do that. Here, we're gonna use a pre-created user and just open Studio. Now the first thing we'll see in Studio is the updated launcher. On the left hand side, you'll see here a couple of different solutions that we can get started on with a single click. On the right, we have the models. So here, let's click and explore these in more detail. There's a few other ways to get to Jumpstart on this screen in particular. You'll notice on the left hand side now, there's a Jumpstart icon. When you click on this, you can then browse Jumpstart to get the same catalog page. We'll scroll down a little bit and look for the models. So here we have text-based models and the vision-based models. Let's take a closer look at a vision-based model for this demo. We can see 
there's over a hundred different models just for vision and in this carousel we can see we get a little bit more detail so we have these particular models the task that they used for here image classification we get the data set that it was pre-trained on ImageNet has a thousand classes but here the number of classes is a thousand and one because there's a background class if an image doesn't have any objects there's a flag to indicate which of these models is fine tunable if you bring your own data set and lastly there's the source of the model we take models from pytorch hub and tensorflow hub in this case this model is from tensorflow hub if you click on the model you get the options to deploy the model as a pre-trained model directly or fine tune the model we'll start off by deploying the model and then we will fine tune it on our own data set you do get some configuration options so you can change the instance type this model is deployed on by default it's on an m5 large instance which is a cpu instance but you can deploy this on a gpu instance for acceleration and then you can change the endpoint name we don't need to change these configuration options with a single click we can deploy our model so let's go ahead and do that now now the first thing that happens when you create an endpoint is a model is prepared this packages up that pre-trained model ready to be used by an endpoint so our model has been created and now the next thing that will happen is the endpoint will start to be created as well here we can see that the endpoint is now creating and this typically takes around five to ten minutes so i've prepared another endpoint that we can use straight away this is what the endpoint would look like once it's completely spun up we have a direct link to a notebook where we can use this endpoint and send our own images to the endpoint to get predictions. So let's open the notebook for this. In this notebook, the first thing we do is download some example images. Now we can just read these into Python and further down, we can send these images to this particular endpoint. So we created an endpoint with this name and all we're doing is passing in an image and sending it to the endpoint. We're using the invoke endpoint command to do this. Then we get a response from the endpoint back and we're just processing this to get the predictions. And we're gonna do this loop through these different images. So we've got two images and just show the um, predicted classes for these two. But let's say we wanted to test our endpoint on a new image. Maybe we've got an image of a sunflower, for example. So we can go to the file explorer here. We can either upload a new image with this upload button or just drag and drop a new image. So here we're taking a sunflower image, I'm gonna drop that in. And now we can load this into the notebook and send it to the endpoint just like before. So just below these two images, we have the code that reads in the sunflower image into Python we'll send it to the endpoint just like before and get some predictions. So we can see that the model is quite close in its prediction in the sense that it predicted B um, and Daisy. So Daisy, another type of flower, similar, but this is a sunflower. Now the reason why the model hasn't got the correct answer of sunflower is because sunflower wasn't one of those original classes in that list of a thousand different classes. So we, this is a case for fine tuning of a model. We can provide some sample images of different types of flowers, and then we can expect the model to be able to predict the correct class. For this, let's go back to the Jumpstart browser. Find the Inception v3 model. And instead of deploying the pre-trained model on ImageNet, we can scroll down to the fine tune section. Now here I have previously uploaded a number of different images from the TF flowers data set and I put them on S3. And let's jump over to S3 to take a look at the format of these particular images. We 
go back to the management console, we can either search or click on S3. Here we have the different buckets that we have inside our account and I put them in the SageMaker Jumpstart demo bucket under the TF flowers prefix. Here for object classification, we have a number of different folders or prefixes for the different classes. And within each of these prefixes, we have a number of different images that represents that class. We could just select the default data set in this case, which is also TF flowers, but let's go through and find the data in this S3 bucket. The first thing we need to do is select the bucket where our data is and then specify the prefix. So we had our data at TF flowers. Just as with deploying an endpoint, we have some configuration options. Here we're using a G4 instance type because it's got a GPU going to leave the model name and we have some extra hyperparameter settings that determine how the model is going to be trained. So here we're going to train the model for three epochs, three passes through the data set with a learning rate of 0 0.05, actually going to change the batch size to 32 so we can get a bit of increase in performance and fully use the GPU. Now we can just with a single click, click on train. This is going to kick off a SageMaker training job behind the scenes. This typically takes around about five minutes for this particular data set. But once again, I've created a fine tuning training job before, so we can just jump ahead and see how the model predictions look like. On the left hand side, we can see the jumpstart panel and we can see we have completed a training job previously. One of the important things to note here is the output path. This is a reference to a location in S3 where the model data is going to be saved. And here it's in a model.tar.gz. Inside this particular um, archive is the trained model and a CSV that maps the IDs of classes to labels. So maybe index number three relates to a sunflower and that's we can use that mapping when we're interacting with the endpoint if you're happy with the training job and you can check the metrics in cloudwatch you can then go ahead and deploy this fine-tuned model similar to how we deployed the pre-trained model on ImageNet. i've also deployed this particular model previously so we can just jump back and find this model endpoint This was our particular fine-tuned model and we can open the notebook again to test this model on that test data. But I'm just going to use the original notebook and then see if we can see an improvement in our model's prediction for the sunflower. This was our previous prediction for our pre-trained model. We're now just going to copy down that model archive that I mentioned before from the training job and we're going to extract it. And inside here will be that mapping that converts the class uh, label to the class index. So we can go ahead and load that particular thing in. It's in a file called class label to prediction index.json, which is for the mapping. And we want to send this request to a different endpoint before our endpoint was the um, dash four, which was just for the pre-trained model. But now we have a new endpoint that's had fine tuning performed on it. And that was dash one. So this is the same function, but we're gonna pass as query fine tune endpoint. Now we can take the same image and pass it to the this new fine-tuned endpoint and see if our predictions have updated. So here with our new endpoint, we have a much more accurate prediction. The top class is Sunflower, which is indeed correct. So this shows if you have your own data sets, you can fine-tune those pre-trained models. 
and get more useful predictions for your particular use case. Now it's important to remember that for each of these examples we've spun up and created an endpoint and you pay for all the time that that endpoint is accessible. So if we go back to the jumpstart panel and select this particular endpoint, our fine tuned, we can then look at the bottom to delete this endpoint and this will avoid us um, being charged accidentally when we're not using that endpoint. Now let's take a closer look at solutions. Solutions cover common end-to-end -end use cases, and here we're looking at product defect detection. You can bring product images, save them in Amazon S3, and then the solution will take care of training a model and deploying an endpoint using Amazon SageMaker. You can then use this endpoint with new images to detect product defects. There are other solutions that cover more comprehensive architectures. In the Explaining Credit Decisions solution, we use AWS Glue to do data pre-processing and Amazon ECR to host custom model Docker images. The Detecting Malicious Users and Transactions solution uses Amazon API Gateway, Kinesis Data Firehose and AWS Lambda in addition to all the other components. But the key takeaway here is you don't need to understand all of these AWS services in great detail because the solution will create all of these resources when it launches. Under the hood, the solution is using cloud formation to create a stack with these resources. As I mentioned, these solutions cover common business use cases and can be deployed with a single click, just like with open source models. In addition, these solutions can be modified very easily. You have access to the underlying source code and the notebooks, which you can edit. There's a wide range of solutions that are covered in Jumpstart. Everything from predictive maintenance for fleet management to extracting and analyzing data from documents, whether that's handwriting recognition or document understanding for entity recognition and relationship extraction. We're gonna take a closer look at detecting malicious transactions in one solution. Where previously, rule-based systems were used to either approve or deny transactions. And here in this solution, we're gonna replace the rule-based system with machine learning and look at an unsupervised and supervised learning technique. So let's jump back to Jumpstart and take a look at this particular solution. Moving back to SageMaker Studio and looking at the Jumpstart catalog page, we can see all the solutions listed at the top. So we can scroll through these solutions or we can use the search feature at the top. We're interested here in a fraud based solution. So let's go ahead and search for fraud. And there are two solutions. Uh, we're interested in the second one because we're looking at trying to detect fraudulent transactions. So let's click on there. When you click on a solution, you get a basic description of what the solution is trying to achieve. You get information about the specific data set that's used as part of the demo. Here it's anonymized credit card transactions that have been labeled as either fraudulent or not. Further down, you can see the architecture diagram. And here you can see we have resources such as uh, Amazon API Gateway endpoints. We have Kinesis Data Firehose and Amazon S3 buckets, as well as the SageMaker resources that we'll be creating as part of the notebooks. Scrolling back up to the top, just as with the open source models from Jumpstart, with a single button, you can deploy the whole solution. So let's click launch. We can now see that this solution is being launched and behind the scenes, a cloud formation stack is being created for all those resources that you saw in the architecture diagram. This typically takes around about five minutes. So I've previously created the same solution. If we move across to that particular solution, we can see we have the option to open a notebook, which is gonna get us started uh, using a demo endpoint that was deployed as part of the cloud formation stack. We have a list of the generated artifacts that are created as part of the solution. And we can click on these to get more information or use the delete button to clean them up after use. But let's start off with the notebook. Let's take a look at the demo notebook. 
we can either click on the open notebook button or navigate to the file explorer. We'll click on the endpoint demo notebook to begin with. And running through this particular notebook, after we read in the credit card fraud data set, we pass this to the deployed endpoint using the SageMaker real-time predictor. Passing all of the data through this particular endpoint, we can then evaluate the accuracy of this model on our data set. And we have a balanced accuracy of 90%. Moving to the other notebook, we can now drill down into some of the details on how this particular model got trained and also look at an unsupervised model, which can be used to detect anomalous behaviors. With these notebooks, you can run all cells at once using the run all button. But in this case, we're gonna work through the notebook and work out the different components. So to begin with, we extract the credit card data set and show some summary statistics. So here we have a number of different numerical features and we have a label that indicates whether each transaction was fraudulent or not. You can bring your own data sets with your own features into this particular model. As we work down through the notebook, we split a training set from a test set, which allows us to accurately evaluate the performance of our models. And the first model that we start with is an unsupervised learning model, specifically a random cut forest model. That's a SageMaker inbuilt algorithm. And so we can pass our data to this particular estimator from the Python SageMaker SDK, and then call the dot fit method with our data. So this isn't going to use the label from our data set, which indicated whether a transaction was fraudulent or not. Instead, it's going to train an anomaly detector that will give you a score of how anomalous each particular transaction was. So after we've fit this random cut forest to our data, we can then host this to an endpoint and then pass our data through the endpoint to get anomaly scores for all the transactions. And so even though we didn't pass in the label to this particular model, we can see that there's a separation in these two classes. We can see that fraudulent cases have a slightly higher anomaly score than the non-fraudulent cases. But if your data set does have a label which indicates records that are fraudulent or not, you can opt for the supervised learning technique. And so here, because we have tabular data, we use a gradient boosted tree model called XGBoost. Again, this is a SageMaker inbuilt algorithm, so it's really quick and easy to get started with. We load our data in the appropriate format, specify some hyperparameters for this particular model, and then start the training using an estimator. Well, once we have the trained model, we can go ahead and deploy. We're gonna use the endpoint to determine accuracy of the model on this data set. And by passing all of those transactions through our endpoint, we obtain an accuracy score of 90%. This data is highly imbalanced with less than 1% of the data being fraudulent. Uh, and so we're looking at these alternative measures and metrics. Further down, we can take a look at the confusion matrix, which shows how many samples have been misclassified. Now that we have both endpoints deployed, both the unsupervised and the supervised models, we can go ahead and test the integration with Lambda, Kinesis, and S3 buckets. So after a small edit to our permissions, we can go ahead and start a background process that's just gonna create some fake traffic that we're gonna to use to send to our endpoint to get predictions back. So once that's started, we can then go ahead and check the Lambda function and that's going to be handling these incoming requests via API Gateway, sending them to both of our models to get predictions for a fraud score and anomaly score, and then saving those to S3 via the Kinesis Firehose. And all this is happening seamlessly as part of the solution. You don't have to necessarily understand how those components are connecting. 
So first of all, let's take a quick look at the Lambda monitoring page for this particular Lambda function. As we go over, we can see the various statistics. So first of all, here we're looking at the invocations, so the number of times this particular Lambda function has fired. And every time the Lambda function has been invoked, it will be requesting those two scores, scores from SageMaker and then sending them to the Kinesis Firehose. After it's gone through the Firehose, that will be batched up and saved to S3 on a regular basis. And now if we move over to S3 to take a look at the S3 bucket, we can see there is a number of files that have been stored here. And these contain the input requests as well as those predictions from SageMaker, which we can use to do visualizations or some batch analysis. So the last part of this solution is looking at a technique called SMOTE, which can be used for cases with class imbalance such as this. We compare the XGBoost model with SMOTE to without, and the performance of these two may change depending on your particular dataset. When you're finished with the solution, don't forget to clean up the resources. In this particular cell, we delete the endpoints, but return to jumpstart and find your particular solution and then click delete solution. This will delete all of the associated resources from the CloudFormation stack. And then lastly, we're gonna take a look at the getting started content in SageMaker Jumpstart. There are a variety of notebooks, tutorials, and videos to help you get started. And they cover a wide range of topics. Just like before, these are accessible via Amazon SageMaker Studio. Let's take a look through the catalog. We've previously looked at solutions and models in this presentation, but underneath you'll see a collection of getting started content. This includes notebooks, blog posts, and videos. And so here, the first thing we could see is we have dedicated notebooks for all the different SageMaker algorithms. And that covers things from linear learner, XGBoost, all the way to deep AR for time series forecasting. In addition to looking at specific algorithms, there are a lot of other use cases that are covered in the example notebooks. So we have things like training with spot instances to reduce your training costs and working to deploy Onyx models, for example. And each of these, if we click in to the spot instance notebook has all the code that you can run through to get started and use that particular feature. Underneath that are a selection of blog posts that cover a, a wide range of different topics. We have things um, from automatic model tuning to debugging models with SageMaker debugger. And here we have more code snippets than in the notebooks, but a lot more uh, explanations as to how to use the particular feature. And then lastly, at the bottom, we have a collection of videos. So all of this content can help you get started with SageMaker really quickly and easily. Let's wrap up by taking a look at a few customer comments. The common underlying theme here is that it's reduced the time it takes to get to mach machine learning to production. Mission Automate, for example, are a small consultancy, and they were trying to fine tune BERT text classification models. The training went smoothly, but there were problems when it came to deployment. Now with Jumpstart, with a single click, they can fine tune and deploy these text classification fine tune models. So in summary, Jumpstart helps you get set up quickly and easily, bringing machine learning applications to market. They cover a number of different solutions and open source models. And then with a single click, you can get started Thank you very much.